Strictly are you recording? Without written consent of WSTU. The phone lines are open. Call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788. That's 220-WSTU. It's time for Stuart Laser Talk with your host, Dr. Tred J. Rezacker. and 242 pounds. I always say this is the biggest I'm ever going to be, and I said that 20 pounds ago. A third of Americans are obese, and another third is overweight. Obesity is the biggest threat to the health, welfare, and future of this country. I've always been overweight. I've got diabetes. I sleep apnea and heart disease. Everything's right now. It's a lot easier to lose weight than it is to keep mm -hmm. weight off. This is probably going to be the first generation of children who are going to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. 18% of our children obese. right now are obese. obese. It's not only <laughs> it's health, not it's funny. about survival and well-being of the United States as a nation. You don't crave broccoli, and our generation has grown up craving a Big Mac. I want to think that there's something better for me. Unless we're able to control this epidemic, we're going to have an abundance of chronic disease. All of us have to be part of the solution to reduce obesity. The way the nation is out of control, but we can fix that. If we don't now take this as a really urgent national priority, we are all going to pay a really serious price. Obesity will crush the United States in oblivion. Good morning, Treasure Coast. Good morning, everybody, all my loyal listeners, and to those who are just tuning in, you have been fortunate enough to tune into the Slim Body Laser Spa's health and wellness show with an emphasis on weight loss and how today's modern lasers are being used to help us to feel better, to look better, to, uh, to get rid of stubborn fat, to ensure results. Uh, less downtime, less pain. I mean, lasers are absolutely changing the world. I think we know that. Uh, lasers are just something that really uh, is mind-blowing when you understand how they work. And, and today is a program that really focuses on that. Uh, my name is Dr. Tred Rissacker, and I'm a doctor of chiropractic, and I've been in practice for 28 years. Uh, graduated from Cleveland Chiropractic College back in 1988 and have been in active practice since. Uh, my office is located in Stewart. It's on 2311 Southeast Ocean Boulevard. It's across the street from the Fresh Market on East Ocean next to Carmela's Pizza and it's called the Slim Body Laser Spa. Uh, you can lose three to nine inches of stubborn fat lying on your back listening to music at the Slim Body Laser Spa. There are no uh, strenuous, there's no harsh dieting and there's no strenuous exercise at all. <clears throat> so uh, this old adage that you have to suffer and no pain, no gain just doesn't really apply when it comes to laser assisted fat loss. Uh, the laser does the work and uh, we help you uh, to get rid of the fatty acids which I will go into in depth today. If you're interested in a free consultation and evaluation, there is no obligation whatsoever to become a client, but you can come in and find out more about the procedure. I will meet with you personally, and we'll go over, the, uh, go over why you're there, what I think I can do, and I'll give you my honest assessment if I really think that the laser could uh, be of help to you. Uh, we've been doing it now six years. We've successfully taken care of over 4,000 clients, I, and I'll tell you, when I got my first lipo laser and I set it up in my my humble chiropractic office on Monterey I had no idea that I was dealing with a superstar that I had this stardom in my office it, it, it seemed so simple and it didn't seem like it really could be truthful that this could really release and remove stubborn fat I mean it, it seemed, everybody knows you gotta diet and exercise to get rid of weight and uh, and that still is true but the laser targets a separate compartment, a different part of your body that you can't really target with diet and exercise. At least not when you're over 50. You can when you're younger. My phone number is 772-223-5885. Uh, my website is uh, pretty simple, slimbodylaserspa.com. You can also type in drtread.com. It'll give you a link to the website. 
we have a Facebook page, uh, Slim Body Laser Spa, Facebook. Uh, we have an Instagram account, which is a lot of fun, <laughs> you know. And uh, what else are we doing there? We got lots of YouTube videos. Uh, and of course, this video, what we're doing right now, is actually being recorded here at the studio. With Mike is now doubling as an audio board guy and also now a video producer. Did they double my pay? Mm, yeah. Oh, I think, okay. I, I talked right, to Greg excellent. about yeah, that. Good. Yeah, good. So oh, I gonna, appreciate that. They're going to really take care of you, Mike. I appreciate that very much. Mike, Mike gets his enjoyment just the fact that he's uh, he loves radio. So... You want you want to you want to take a look at the camera one? Spin it over at yourself. I want oh, you to I, gotta, I want you to see I him. Spin this around. No, you just just grab the little. No, grab oh, a little. Grab this. So you got a fancy. Uh, uh, and you can bring it like that. Hi. How's and it there's going? Mike. Yeah, that's me. Hey, is it a good looking guy? Up, give the fonz, and then we'll spin it right back. Yeah. I I purposefully chose radio so I didn't have to worry about being on camera. Yeah, but I I like to uh, give you a little accolade because you are a big part of this whole programming what makes WSTU so darn successful is Mike and, and his co-host Bonnie in the morning. You Put know? that on my tombstone. That's right. There's a couple other guys that are there before you uh, that were here also. <laughs> we all miss them. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Tommy Teeter and uh, Mike Melman. Steve Melman. Steve Melman. I'm sorry. Steve yeah. Melman. Yeah, they both were my hosts. And I, I know a lot of you listeners out there remember them too. So let's let's get to the fat here. Let's Let's chew the fat here. You know, we are absolutely exploding as a country as far as our waist size goes. And uh, this, it's not only is it a discomfort and, uh, and, and a health risk for people, but it's truly becoming an epidemic of monumental proportions. Uh, the, the trailer that we play before the show here is the one from The Weight of the Nation. It's an HBO three-disc series that you can uh, watch on YouTube. It's free. I highly suggest if you're dealing with weight and you're having a hard time losing weight or you're just wanting to know info more, want to know more information about it, check out that CD series. It is very informative. It's three CDs and I watched it almost four years ago and it's what really, really motivated me to, uh, to look at my weight myself and, and realize that this is not okay. It's, it's a health problem. And, you know, if I was, I don't smoke cigarettes, I don't poison my body, <laughs> you know, I, I try to live healthy and eat good foods, yet I was ignoring something that was glaring, everybody saw it, and it was my weight. So, you know, after watching The Weight of the Nation and they explained uh, how to lose weight, what your BMR is, what your, which is your basal metabolic rate, and your BMI, which is your body fat percentage, and then... The, the techniques and, the, and the, the laws and the rules involved with weight loss and losing inches are very, very well publicized, but they're not well known. And uh, one of them is, is you have to know what your resting caloric intake is. And then that means how many calories you burn at rest. If you don't eat anything for the next day, picture this, everybody. If you don't eat any food today at all, you're still burning calories, correct? You're alive. And those calories that you're burning is your set point. You have developed that calorie amount based on your age, your weight, your height, your gender, and your level of activity, and your body fat percentage. That's what calculates your BMR. If you want to be successful at losing weight, if you want to be successful at tipping the scale down in, in a down fashion, you have to eat less than your BMR consistently, daily, weekly, and monthly. And if you fall off of that, the only way that you can eat more than your BMR is if you exercise more. For some of you, that's what you do. You exercise a lot, so you don't have to watch those calories as close. But here's one of the, 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 fall, the, you know, the downfalls of, of just relying on exercise, is as you get older, it's hard to maintain that level of exercise whether it's because of jobs, whether it's because of energy, maybe it's injuries to your feet, or, you know, you used to play soccer or rugby, and now you can't walk on your leg anymore because it's all arthritic. And once you lose that exercise and you don't back off on eating, if you don't curb the eating, well, then you get overweight. Then you start putting on pounds again. And uh, over 
two to five years, ten years, you can put on a lot of weight. Suppose you only put on one pound a month. Does that seem like a lot? Well, one pound a month. Wait, not from month to month. You're like, oh, okay, oh, it's only pound a pound, right? Well, I can a deal lot of with people that. are going to look at the scale and say, oh, I stayed the same. And what if at the end of a year you, you had twelve pounds extra? Ooh, now okay. you're talking. Well, you know, it's still not that much. It's not really bulging out. Nobody's really noticing it yet. But what about the next year? Now you're up to twenty-four pounds. And then the next year, you're up to 36, 32, something like that. You know, three times 12. Uh, you know, wow, in three years, I could gain 30, 40 pounds overweight. And just by putting on one pound a month. And that's how easy we slip into it. And because it's, it's such a slow process, we don't realize it. Oftentimes, we don't see it, we don't feel it. Now, some people do see it, and they're very conscious about it. But, you know, most people aren't really seeing it. And here's another myth that they say, you know, I'll just diet and I'll lose it. So I can, I'll eat and then I'll go to the weight loss center or maybe I'll buy some products online or follow Dr. Oz's latest suggestions of losing weight and, uh, and I'll, I'll overcome it. And, you know, the truth is it just doesn't happen for people. And uh, if it did, we'd be thin. I'll give you a little statistic about weight and weight gain in America. In 1990, which was, you know, 20-something years ago, 25 years ago, 92,000, uh, they didn't even do statistics for obesity. It wasn't, even a, it wasn't even a problem. I mean, the statistic in 1990 when they first started tabulating people who were obese and people who were overweight, less than 30% of our country was overweight and less than like three to six percent were considered obese in 1990. You speed that up to 2010 and you have at least 60 to 70 percent of our population, adult population, are overweight. 30 percent of Americans are obese and obese means health problems, health risk, high risk of health problems. Now, in 2017, it's actually tipping over 80% are overweight and, and larger than 30. It's like 33% are now considered obese. If we had that kind of rise in any other disease process in America, if we had that kind of rise in cancer rates or heart disease or, or things like that, we would, there would be a, an outrage. The world would be pulled to a halt and uh, monies and energy and effort and time would be put into trying to combat why we're getting so, you know, having this disease process. Yet when it comes to weight gain, which is, a, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a, a sickened body, uh, that we don't seem to really do anything about it. <clears throat> That's bizarre. It really is. Uh, I've just, I always say, go to Publix in the morning or go to one of the stores. Everybody seems to have to go to Publix. And go there at 8 a.m. And, and watch the people walk through. You know, it's 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 sometimes it's horrible. Uh, they, you know, it's, they have such disability, and their feet are swollen, and their backs are, are out, and they're you know trying to move that body through. It's it's hard to move with 40 or 30 or 50 pounds of extra weight on your body. Uh, I'll give you an idea of how much 38 pounds is, which doesn't seem like that much weight. Uh, that's the weight of a five-gallon uh, container of water that you put in the water cooler. The one you have to pick up, you ever get those water bottles delivered? They are heavy, right? Yeah, and I mean, awkward to carry around. And awkward to carry around. How would you like to just tape that to your belly and walk around and get out of a chair and out of bed with that big water jug taped to the front of your body? That's 38 pounds, you know. Uh, I lived that. That was my experience. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that as of 2012, uh, I was 265 pounds, uh, and uh, I had a 41-inch belly, and I was miserable. I wasn't feeling well. I, I really thought aging was starting to catch up with me. I was 53, 54 years old, and uh, I'm telling you, my feet hurt, my knees hurt. I developed a pain in my left foot, which shot into the front of my toes, which I thought was just maybe my arch had come down in my foot. Uh, it didn't go away, and then my foot was numb, <laughs> you know. 
went to the doctors. Uh, you know, I'm a chiropractor, so I, I had an x-ray, and it was nothing abnormal in my foot. It seemed like I had maybe a some, some pain in my foot. It was very unusual. <clears throat> so as a result of that, uh, I started trying to lose weight. I made some promises to my family that I would uh, join the gym, which I did. I joined several gyms. Never really committed with the intensity it takes to get results to stay long enough. And also gyms, uh, and when I work out, I get hungry. It makes me want to eat more. So the more active I am, the more I, I, I justify that I could eat more. Am I the only one that does that? <laughs> so, you know, eating... You know, working out and exercising without cutting back on calories, it doesn't work very well. And uh, you really will hit a plateau where you just don't see any changes. And actually, you'll start to gain weight because you're putting on muscle, which can help in the long run, by the way. So, you know, didn't really commit to it. Uh, started to go on these binge crash diets. These, like I would juice... I'd go out and I bought a really nice juicer and started juicing uh, all my vegetables and, and meals and, you know, doing that. And, and I had no, I did not realize that there's more calories in juice than there is in anything else you could ever put in your body. So this really healthy thing that I made that came from the uh, supermarket, organic food, was really making me fat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the day that I kind of had that realization as well. You think you're being healthy, you're switching to juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice, all these different things, and then you look at it a little bit later and you went, this is loaded in calories and sugar. That's right. That's all it is. Yeah, and it's one of the foods you should never eat. I got a little list here. Top health food you should never eat. Fruit juice. Just as dangerous as soda. Uh. So, uh, you know, and then the uh, the falling off of, of you know, eating and, and and then what happens is you have a tendency of overeating when you get back on, you know, you throw in the towel and go back to it. So you end up, so nothing really was changing. And then I uh, realized I was going to go to a Weight Watchers, actually. I got in my car and I went over off of US-1 there and crossed from the McDonald's and...